What is up, guys? Welcome back to this episode of the Road to Redemption podcast. I'm, as always, your grateful host, Cam Williamson. We got a lot to talk about. A lot of it is going to revolve around the UFC. Jorge Masvidal, Sucker Punch, Colby Covington, after they fought 25 minutes at UFC 272. Sucker Punch him at a Miami restaurant, broke one of his teeth, I guess gave him a shiner. Jorge Masvidal has been arrested on felony charges. Conor McGregor was also arrested same day, or maybe it was the day prior, for driving, I think it was his Benz or one of his Ferraris or something, was driving like 98 miles an hour down the highway and was arrested for dangerous driving. Okay, so we see fighters are a little impulsive. We see that fighters have no issue taking um, their, what, what, what do we call it? Their shocking or brash type behaviors. We see that they have no issue taking that into the real world. I have been warning people about this for a long time. We like to glorify fighters and violent people and the Billy Badasses, action heroes, superhero stuff, violent crazy high-speed chases we like to glorify that stuff and then when we see it happen in real life we go well how dare you how dare you do that it's like guys remember that these guys <laughs> it's great to watch them on pay-per-view it's great and we like the athletic skills that that take place why is it that people go i don't like the shit talking guys i don't like this cockiness i don't like this brash behavior and then people, and I've said both of those things about Conor McGregor and Jorge Masvidal. And people go, oh, well, they're fighters. They're pro fighters. What do you expect? And it's like, yeah, but that's also showing who they really are to a point. I'm not saying Conor doesn't dress up some of his stuff. But, like, as a man, Conor McGregor spoke out of bounds about Dustin Poirier's wife. That, to me, like, I'm a Con I was a Conor fan. I lost a lot of respect for Conor with that. Now... Jorge claims that he punched Colby because he spoke about his children and his ex-wife and all these things. Okay, now we're talking a different story here. We're, we're having a little, a little different combo now because he's right. Colby crossed the line. When Colby was talking about, uh, you know, his ex-wife and he doesn't pay child support. Look, man, a man's situation with his... I knew that was going to happen. When I put that fucking thing up there, I knew it was going to fall at some point. Um, <laughs> family dynamics are so complicated, right? Um, to talk anything about anything, even if you go, well, you could just look it up. Just look it up. You can see it. Like, guys, understand. I just said this recently. When someone gets arrested, that's not always a sign that they've done something wrong. Or when you see a court document go up, it doesn't necessarily mean that the situation is fair and just or whatever. So, like, yeah, Kobe crossed the line by even putting Jorge's family into the mix. You got bad blood with people. You got shit you guys need to handle. You had 25 minutes to handle that, right? And you didn't. Jorge, you got beat up by Colby. So you lose the honor part when you sucker punch him. Had you walked up to him and you addressed him like a man and gone, hey, man, like I told you it's on site and now we're here together. So, motherfucker, it's on site. And then you go again. Well, dude, you lost the fight. So you sucker punched him. So we can't fight you back. And now you're you're actually facing like felony charges, which isn't new. I think Jorge's been arrested before uh, a few times for different things. So it was like, you know, Colby brought that up, talked about how he, he stole sh shit. He was, um, he was, uh, what is it, grand larceny or something? I don't know how true any of that was, but, you know, it, it's a shit situation. Is some of it for marketing? Maybe. I don't understand, especially on Connor's situation. I understand why Jorge got arrested. He's being arrested because he has a warrant out for his arrest for a violent crime. Okay, you're going to get arrested for that. Driving 98 down a highway? And Connor gets arrested for that? In Dublin? Or in Ireland? I 
I'm not saying Connor should receive favor from his countrymen, but I'm a little shocked by it. I- I'm a tad shocked by it as he's, you know, gearing up for this big comeback. He's just now in the press again. He just released like a mitt workout and stuff. Some of this stuff, I've I've looked into it more with like the Pete Davidson, Kim Kanye thing too. It was like they pictured um, Pete Davidson picking Kim K up from the airport and they were kissing and stuff and it was like I'm so over all this fake drummed up what's supposed to be news even though Dana White setting up interviews for Trump with the Nelk boys all the while Conor McGregor's getting arrested for this and he's in the news and they're about to hype a fight between either him and Nate or him and Kamaro him and Kamaro's stuff is going all around it's like yo some of this stuff I'm not saying that celebrities put themselves in situation like arrests to make the news because that's just silly. Nobody would put themselves through that just to make news, but it it, it makes me question how much of it is real. Like when I saw Connor's mugshot, it didn't even look like current Connor. So maybe they were showing an old mugshot and he did, he didn't actually get booked, but he just got like cited or something. That's the thing. It, it, with all this stuff going on in life, it's hard to tell what's true and what's not true. So that brings us to the big point of the day. The pastor of the Hillsong Church, Brian Houston, has resigned. Now, if you're not familiar with Hillsong Church, allow me to bring you up to speed to my knowledge. For the background information, for those of you that don't know, I was heavily involved in Southern Baptist Church to the point where I almost dedicated my life to being a youth pastor. I was definitely um, considering it and was interested in it uh, up until about 17, 18 years old for a while. uh, You know, then things went off the rails. So Hillsong United is a very famous church. They have a very famous church band. Um, I believe they started in Australia. They have a bunch of different kind of sub branches all across the world. And they sing famous gospel songs in kind of a new agey, rock bandy kind of way. Every church going girl that, and it's mainly girls that I've seen. Every, you know, good old Christian girl who loves to, you know, impress their parents and do all this shit. They love Hillsong. They all listen to Hillsong and they love sharing Hillsong. Hillsong is like a brand which is the perfect reason of why this I'm glad that this is happening. This pastor was uh, alleged to have had misconduct with two female members of the congregation. Both times, he claims that sleeping meds were a part of his issue. First time, he like drunk dialed a girl or like drunk texted someone while he was on a sleeping aid and he said some inappropriate things. Okay, so let's start there. The pastor of a church is reaching out to women while intoxicated. Okay, let's talk about what happens in marriages. When marriages are going poorly, there's issues in marriages and the married, the people in these marriages are heavily involved in the church. What do they often do? They seek counsel from the church or they seek counsel from the pastor. So, and I've seen this happen with my own two eyes. Mom, dad, get in a fight. One goes over here, one goes over here. Pastor comes over, talks to dad. Pastor goes over, talks to mom. Gets both sides, plays mediator. Okay, supposed to be playing mediator for God. But how do we not know that there's no selfish desires being acted out? Because you're now seeing you have a pastor at one of the most famous you know, Christian churches across the world, they're a brand. Hillsong United is a brand. Just like Vertical Church was with James McDonald, and now he got all fucked up, and Joel Osteen. These are all brands. This new agey guy that everyone likes to share on TikTok, the the real darker, complected guy with the perfect beard and shit. Here's my problem with all of it. It's all manipulation tactics. These are all people... Not all pastors are this way, but all the ones that were being caught for building these brands, scamming people, and trying to abuse their power. That's what this guy did, right? This guy can't sleep at night. 
where's your savior? Now, I'm not saying that Christians can't take meds and stuff like that, but like you're taking probably, what's that shit called that Roseanne took? Uh, Ambien. You're probably taking Ambien. Sure. Makes you do wild shit. I've heard that and it's on record. It makes people do wild shit. But you as a pastor of a church are kind of feeding out, essentially during a drunk text, you're feeding out what? Whatever your brain is, is you are not allowing your brain to process. So your interest in these women that maybe you don't allow yourself to fully let sink into your brain, well, that ambient might just. And then you lower down those things and now, hey, 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 how's everything going? Just wanted to check in. Well, that's kind of inappropriate. Why would he do that? Oh, my bad. My bad. I was on Ambien. My bad. And then there's another one where I guess he showed up to a lady's house all fucked up on Ambien. But again, if I'm your pastor and we have a rapport where when your life is falling apart, I just show up to your rescue. Oh, do you need to talk? Do you need to talk? Let me pray with you. Let me pray with you is one of the most like... That's like it should be a slogan for predators. Can I pray with you? Can I just can I just sit with you a moment? Fuck off, dude. You don't know me and you don't know fucking God any better than you know me. Get fucked, my guy. I cannot fucking stand watch to watch human beings act like they have this special relationship with God that nobody else could possibly understand, so therefore you can counsel me about my fucking life. To the point where if I trust you so much that I call you in a time of trouble, that may somehow... Now, luckily I'm not a woman, so I've never, you know, no pastor I've ever been around has ever taken a you know, go at me, but I'm not Catholic. So, there's that. When you see it, and I, I've watched it, I've had exes of mine, I've had dear friends of mine, I've had so many people in my life that when life got hard, a pastor was put on them, or church was put on them, or Christian values were put on them to make them feel guilty and make them feel bad and make them feel small. And and a lot of the times it starts when the just like when people are, you know, getting off of addiction or coming out of jail or, you know, whatever, they find religion because it gives them a purpose. When people are at their lowest, after breakups and deaths and being fired and not getting into the college you wanted, depending on what part of life you're in, divorces, whatever, it's going to deepen the emotional connection that you and that person make. But the problem is, it's not that you're seeking counsel, you just... Pay attention to what you're seeking counsel of. If you're a female and you're married and your marriage is on the shits, you going to talk to another man about how to fix your marriage is never going to be the fucking answer for that. Never. Now, if you two in the marriage have agreed that like you're going to run a God-centered marriage, okay, fine. Seek out female counsel to help from... But do it with somebody you trust. The problem is it turns into churches are just other friend groups. So you just talk to people and then you end up talking shit about your spouse and then the church ends up gossiping about it and then everybody gets involved and now there's a Sunday meetup where everybody's bringing food and we're going to talk about it and work shit out. Yo. Church oversteps its bounds a lot and we allow it to, right? So like, separation of church and state supposed to be a fucking thing but in god we trust is on our dollar bill why why are church values brought into government if church and state are separate then in god we trust on the national currency doesn't make a lot of fucking sense my guy because you're saying in order for me to use this or be in this society in god i have to trust why Look at his so-called disciples or messengers that are amongst us these days. It's a bunch of fucking predators. Look at the Hollywood celebrity pastors that just got nailed for, like, messing around on his wife and doing all kinds of shit. Guys, if, if you still wake up in 2022 and you look at organized religion and go, that's a way that the world actually works, 
Jesus came back and he died for my sins and he thinks that I should condemn people to hell. I should involve myself in other people's marriages. I should tell people how they should live their life. And if they don't, they're going to burn forever in a hell that I know exists. And I'm going to go to a heaven that I know exists because I'm that fucking smart. Miss me with it all. Churches are tax-free businesses. These motherfuckers just get paid in the shade. They convince themselves that they're doing it for the Lord. And then when an evil thought comes up, if, if, you know, if they can't pray it away, they'll take an Ambien and then it might sleep out, slip out. And now Hillsong comes out and goes, hey, it was time for a change anyway. Was it time for a change? Y'all didn't know this guy? So he's the pastor of this church. He's the face of this thing. Y'all have no problem counseling everybody else about everything they're doing in their life. Coming down to the thoughts they have, the food they eat, the movies they watch. You got thoughts on all that. You could put on a great performance, big live shows, music, lights. Ah, everybody doing all this. But you can't keep it real and go, oh, our pastor... He's trying to fuck some of y'all's moms out here. Some of them might be married. You know, hey, a parent, you know, our pastor's a dude. He's out here texting the members of our congregation. Let's just, mm, we're not going to talk about that. Hey, man, stay off the Ambien. Oh, you did it twice now? Well, we're going to have to let you go, man. Can't have that. It's just fucking disgusting. It's fucking disgusting. I hate nothing more than watching people abuse power that they shouldn't even fucking have. To stand on a stage and act like you are a righteous messenger of the Lord and that you know more than the people that you're talking to and that you can in any way guarantee them that by acting a certain way you're guaranteeing their salvation, that should be criminal. If it wasn't backed, by people telling the same stories for thousands of fucking years, in today's day and age, we would call the church a cult. Well, you come and you take communion and you consume the body and the blood of Christ, who has been scientifically proven existed and had almost no connection to the stories that the Bible tells. Every bit of that has been misproved or shown how it's somehow exaggerated or you know not quite what it seems. What are we doing? How many scams do we need to watch until we're like, oh, okay. None of us know what the fuck's going on here. And sure, it's depressing. You still got to deal with your mortality and what's going to happen in the afterlife. But welcome to life. Just because we don't choose to involve ourselves with certain questions of the world don't mean that the problems don't still exist. It makes me sad. I have people very dear and near and dear to my heart who I love so much. And they will never realize their full maximum potential in this life and the life they could lead and the happiness that they could feel because they are kept small and small minded by those around them in the names of being a good person, a good parent, a good spouse, a good, you know, steward whatever and it's all in an attempt to control and manipulate people to live the way that they think you should live i think that should be a crime and with that guys i'm going to cut this episode short i love you all so much check out the road to redemption podcast.com for all the merch and everything like that i threw the hoodie on the floor because it fell but you know you guys know what violently caffeinated stuff looks like go check it out thumbs up Subscribe so you see the new episodes when we drop them. Comment. Let me know what you guys think. This is kind of an all-over podcast, but breaking news is what it is. It's breaking, and we're going to talk about it. I love you.